today we'll be exploring France. We will see the grandeur of Paris and Rouen, quirky harbors of Honfleur and La Rochelle, the robust city of Havre with its wide spaces, see the church of St. Catherine and Gros Hall Lodge, a true image of Renaissance, see the intimate beauty of Cannes and also share some camping tips and quirky experiences we had along the way. But then pigeons had inappropriately loud sexual activity right above us, like really right above the tent. Our journey began in Dover, where we set off on a ferry. The white chalk cliffs of Dover are incredibly beautiful, especially when observed from the sea. So here's the thing, most cliffs, the bigger they are, the taller they are, can only be appreciated from the sea. Isle of Wight is a fine example of that. When we visited Alum Bay, the unique cliffs made of coloured sand. When you're up close to them, the beauty is almost fading, but when you are on a boat looking at them from the sea, suddenly the colours stand out and the scene is that much more spectacular. So here we are on the ferry observing the magnificent cliffs. It's quite amazing to grasp that the beauty we are looking at is about 100 million years old. Arriving in France, the first thing that I had to adapt to was driving on the right hand side of the road. Needless to say, it happened very quickly. Only roundabouts were a touch confusing at first. Our first destination was Trouville. We were blessed to have a camping pitch with a view on the sea. I decided to share with you how we've set up our tent. Now 80% of enjoyment of any holidays, how we lay out the space around us. And although we don't spend much time uh, inside the tent throughout the day, we spend our mornings here and we spend our evenings here. So let's go and check it out. This is a uh, Warburn 500 uh, Van Gogh tent, which is absolutely amazing. First time we saw it, we thought, oh, it's gonna be way too big for just the two of us. But then when we've laid it out, it appeared to be just right. Not too big, not too small, just right. You know what the key is? To us, the key thing was that you can actually stand up. Stand up in the tent, because you can stand up. It's like, it's like a little hut. You can stretch, you can chill, you can cook. So if you follow me right here, you'll see. This is how we've set it up. This is almost like our lounge area. A couple of chairs with um, a couple of IKEA throws. Right here we have our uh, our food and our cutlery and crockery. All the washing up is there. A bit of water. This is the table where things get done and uh, all the cooking takes place. Obviously coffee makers can't ignore those. Uh, we like our coffees done differently, so this is why we have two, uh, two coffee makers. This is a fantastic little thing. It's so small, so compact, folds very neatly. It's a, uh, it's a gas, gas cooker, gas burner. Really nice. So, if you look at this, what would we decided to do? We decided to lay down this very basic floor mark, which kind of mimics the, um, the grass, sort of slightly geometric. Then on the top of it comes this wonderful IKEA rug. So as you come in, you can go right inside. And right here you can see also a little plastic rug to enable you to sort of leave your shoes over here and wipe them if needs be. So let's check out this sleeping area. So if you follow me right here, you'll see what looks like a double bag, in fact, it's not. This is a wonderful mattress, uh, which is um, like a sleeping bag, double sleeping bag mattress. But under, underneath, if I may, you'll be able to see that it's no other but two sun lounge beds from Ikea. Butted together, put together, they're not even fixed. But we never once had a problem whereby uh, they slide apart 
and that's why it feels so nice it feels like we're actually sleeping on the bed now when you wake up first thing you do is you sit down and your feet engage with this beautiful rug which lies on another rug so no matter how hot or cold it is it feels just right inside um, what we've decided is that instead of having multiple bags it's better to have multiple boxes and, and solid vessels so to speak for instance this basket over here it works together with with the rug so all of the all of the washing goes here i mean like uh, for instance things like a towel the wash bag they all go here uh, bags with clothes again this is a, a really nice ikea lampshade uh, just to create a bit of atmosphere you can see a lot of a lot of storage there again if you know if you notice it's all solid we really don't like the bags because once it's solid it has a shape and you can see through it and you can organize things better and it doesn't turn your your uh, your, your, uh, your tent into a mess obviously you can zip these these doors over here and you can close this window you can close those two little windows there's plenty of air in the tent it's really spacious it's really nice and it's just right I mean it's just right for two people uh, with a bit of stretching space because um, as I said 80% of enjoyment is through space around you beach here is full of broken shells you can't quite see it but it's not just the sand it's a mixture it's a mixture of of shells teeny tiny little pieces of broken down shells For those of you who are not too keen on the mornings in general, bakeries in France don't overproduce bread, so be sure to be there early. We were quite surprised that many bakeries were almost empty by as early as 11 o'clock in the morning. This is the fish market. I love the concept fresh sea products on the left and it gets served to you on the right. Doesn't get any fresher than that. Oysters and whelks. It doesn't get any fresher than this. It doesn't get any tastier than this. Pretty much across the bridge, there's a beautiful town of Deville where we went to explore Villa Strasburger. A building so ornate, if one is in love with architecture in general, one could look at it for hours. And if one is not in love with architecture, those people will certainly change their minds. This villa was built in 1907. The railway arrived to Trouville in 1863, making it possible to get to Deville from Paris in six hours. Do bear in mind that six hours now seems like a very long time, but in 1800s it probably felt like 30 minutes now. Life was much slower and it was usually that the wealthier people could travel. Cheap travel at a time usually meant walking. Here is the beautiful town of Deville. Busy town center with its boutiques was very crowded. The atmosphere was leisurely and pleasant. Nobody was in the rush for sure. 
we absorbed the atmosphere and enjoyed our time exploring. Get some really nice cafes, boulangeries, and restaurants. But look at those ornate houses. Absolutely amazing. So let's take a little walk. different animals and different figures made of clay and covered with uh, some shiny substance. I don't know the technical term for it, but the town is full of those figures. They're so ornate. They make roofs look so much better. Like little touches. Because Deville was built in 1800s, its infrastructure feels modern and predictable. The town is spacious and super nice to drive through as well. Parking was never a problem, even in such a busy season. France is known for its style, but when you look at quirky boutiques like this, my heart certainly skips a beat. After exploring Deville, we came back to Trouville, where we stayed and enjoyed the atmosphere there. Ornate villas with colorful wooden beams were everywhere. The craftsmanship is second to none. saw those net bags. I had a moment of nostalgia. For many years I thought that those were Russian. And of course the cafes, they're so beautiful in France. On our way to Rouen, we stopped in a tiny place with a very unusual kiosk. A place with no cashier. Let's pop in and find out. So over here, what you can see is different products. For instance, organic eggs, you have 12, you have 6, you have beans, and you have lentils of some sort. But what you do, you put your money right here, or banknotes go here, pick and choose a number, and then the door opens. So it's almost like a self-service um, self shop, which I think is quite cool. Uh, we've seen some in England, which are honest shops, where you just put the money in a little box, but this one's a little bit more advanced, and I like it. So let's see if this whole thing works. It's number 21. I'm going to pop the money right there. You can see on the screen that it's reflecting. And... Never been easier. Check this out. Six organic eggs. Our next destination is Rouen. The city is famous for Joanne of Arc. Rouen Cathedral, painted by French Impressionist Monet and Gros Horloge, a 14th century astronomical clock. It was one of the major cities in the Anglo-Norman dynasties, which ruled both England and parts of France from 11th to 15th centuries. The 
those are the traditional courtyards. No tourists come here, but we were curious to see what they look like. There are so many carved gargoyles and other strange creatures, and not just on churches, but on houses too. Again, one of the many aspects of beauty of this wonderful place is a mixture of styles, an absolute mix. Just check that out. These are the old streets of Rouen. Luckily, they are for pedestrians only, so you can wander around and enjoy the scene, not worrying about the cars. This is the Gross Hall Lodge, a 14th century astronomical clock made in 1389. Its mechanism is the oldest in France. The facade, however, was added in 1529. It's quite incredible to learn that such a beautiful piece of architecture took so long to build. The amount of planning involved and artistic craftsmanship is very impressive. Moving on from this gem of beauty, this is Rouen Cathedral, built in 1030. Thanks to the incredible maintenance, it looks like it never aged. It's very ornate, and it took us some time to absorb its grandiose beauty. The scene you see above the huge entrance depicts the life of Christ. Claude Monet, famous French Impressionist, produced a series of paintings showing this cathedral in different time of day. These paintings are in different galleries all around the world. The National Gallery of Art in Washington DC, Musée d'Orsay in Paris and Pushkin Museum in Moscow. Joan of Arc was tragically executed in this city. This is the Museum of Joan of Arc.
from historical city of Rouen, one other place we were keen to visit was Le Havre, only a short drive away from our campsite. For those who never drove in France, please bear in mind that many stretches of road have toll points, so it's not just petrol to take into account. This means that a relatively short journey could cost you more if you are passing a toll point. For us, it was worth the visit. Grandiose city of Le Havre looked very much like a Russian city with its broad promenades and square parks. It's like second Russia to me. I'm at home. The port city felt very broad and spacious. 1960s architecture didn't feel out of place either. And being an old city, there were echoes of the past too. Despite the modern feel, Le Havre started growing rapidly because of the busy port at the end of the 18th century. But it welcomed its first ship in October of 1518. Leaving the grandeur of Le Havre, we're about to see the beautiful and quirky Honfleur. Honfleur is famous for its timbered houses, picturesque harbour and very unique church, the Church of St. Catherine, which is very, very special. So let's explore the city. This is the traditional port of Honfleur. The oldest parts of the port were built in 1840 and this terrace of houses attracted many artists, including Pablo Picasso. It is believed to be that it is in the city the Impressionism was born. This is the place where young Claude Monet was mentored by Eugène Boudin, who was one of the first French artists who began painting in the open air. He said, three brush strokes from nature are worth two days in the studio. It's quite incredible to realize that what we take for granted now, take a picture outside or paint a painting outside, was quite a novelty at the time. Earlier on, we've passed near the uh, antique shop, near some antique shop, and there was one painting which really reached out to me. It reminded me of the university where I went to uh, back in Russia, and that's exactly how we were taught to draw. I don't know why I'm whispering. We're in the street, we're not exactly in the library, but my god, it felt so authentic and so beautiful. This city is very old. The earliest mention dates back to 11th century, and that's the age of the documents. I have little doubt that the actual settlement is much older than that. Yeah. 
Just look at those houses over there. Doesn't get any quirky and smaller than those ones. There is something quite magnificent when you see the scene like this in its entirety. Something very similar is in La Rochelle, where we will be going later on our journey too. This is the Church of St. Catherine. It is incredibly spacious inside, which is unusual for churches built about 500 years ago. This is because it was built of wood, and who other than shipbuilders would know the intricacies of building large hulls? It is the shipbuilders who built it using their great knowledge and amazing craft work. It is also the biggest wooden church in France. We heard them first and saw them moments later, the beautiful vintage cars. Those are the beautiful streets away from the busy city center. Just like in many other places, here is where the magic happens. It is here that you see how the local people live. Something like this happened to us in Amalfi in Italy. We were literally walking a few blocks away from the busy high street, about a 10 minute walk, and those were the views with no one around. Get into the streets like this one. You barely see any tourists here. It's so empty, but in a good way. Saying goodbye to Honfleur, we are setting off to see the capital of France. Yep, you guessed it right, Paris. We are going to see the city as it is, with its palace-like grandeur. Paris became capital of France in the year of 987. Although the city is very old, the major upgrade happened in the 17th century. The houses, which look like palaces, are spacious with large windows and road structures are very good as well. This is Notre Dame de Paris, the finest example of French Gothic architecture, which by the way, originated in France. Yep, Gothic architecture originated in France. 
It is incredible to imagine that the construction of this masterpiece started in 1163, and we were lucky to see it before the tragic events of 2019, when the fire struck the cathedral. You can buy paintings and sketches just across the river from Notre Dame. This is River Sienne. I love how multiple bridges and embankments shape the river. The city is very geometric too. That was the fashion at the time of the major rebuild. I would say town planning completely changed the direction of people's lives. It became a modern city as we know it. It became a birthplace of high fashion and the modern restaurant, pencil, calculator, pasteurization, canning of foods and vaccination, stethoscope, aspirin, bicycle, hairdryer and mobile phone camera, which was invented in Paris by Philippe Kahn in 1997. All of that is Paris. This is one of the most grandiose places of beauty, the Louvre. It used to be the palace for the kings in 16th and 17th centuries, until later it was moved to Versailles. It's only during the French Revolution it became a museum. This is the Arc of Triumph. It is a truly magnificent piece of architecture. To me, it looks even better at night. All the fine details are perfectly lit, creating a heavenly impression. Our next destination is La Rochelle, with its gorgeous port and rock fort, a place which strangely enough reminds me of the city of Bath in England, only houses there are almost white, rather than sand-colored, like the ones you see in Bath. The port of La Rochelle dates back to 1130, and only 22 years later the presence of Knights of Templar made this port become the biggest port on the Atlantic. Coming back to the present day and present moment, that day when we visited the place was so hot it was a challenge. The temperature was plus 40 degrees, a very, very hot day and a very hot place indeed. It's absolutely boiling, even this cold breeze isn't helping. Look at this beauty. Moving further south, we are now in Rockford, famous for its naval connection since 1665. These are the unique streets of this place. Rockfort used to be a small town around the castle in the 11th century. It did, however, had a major remake in 17th century. Let's enjoy those historical facades. And finally, Cannes. The city is known for its film festival and seaside. As always, to us, the grandeur is great, but quirky streets are even better. The settlement dates back to 2nd century BC. At that time, it was a fishing village with a very busy port. I truly hope you enjoyed sharing this journey with us. And if you liked this piece, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, until our next adventure.
Bye-bye.